the Arizona Signal Watcher DXing video blog. Episode 10, Audio Processing for FM DXing. FM broadcast band DXing can be very hit or miss, particularly for distances greater than those supported by tropospheric propagation mechanisms. With the exception of ocean paths, long-distance reception from 1,000 miles or more generally involves the ionosphere. Two primary mechanisms are meteor scatter, which can work from around 300 to 1,500 miles and is typically short-lived, and sporadic E from about 500 to 1,500 miles, which is very, well, sporadic, but can last longer. Even at the peak of a meteor shower or during a sporadic E outbreak, one may need to record many hours of audio to get anything interesting. For this video, I'm assuming that you have an audio recording in a standard format. In my case, I do a broadband raw data recording using an SDR and then extract audio on a frequency-by-frequency -frequency basis as a .wav or .mp3 file. There are some things that can make it easier to find actual audio within a recording, as well as make the audio easier to hear, and in this video I'm going to give you some tips on that. While there are many software packages available for audio processing, one of the best, as well as one of the most multi-platform, is the free open source Audacity. It runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux, although make sure to check their web page for any issues concerning specific versions of those operating systems. So here we have an example. This is uh, from the June 13th Sporadic E outbreak. And this is one of the extracted audio files from 88.1 megahertz. And this is about a 12-minute segment, actually... Um, if I select all here, it's 11 minutes 58.57 uh, seconds, which you can't actually quite see there. And what we see, first of all, most of this is static. We see this um, kind of general uh, fuzzy top and bottom to this wave, to the waveform. And that's essentially static. That's uh, when a station is not coming in. But these little places where there are features, that's some weak uh, signal coming in. And then you see stronger signals in a few places. Really, you don't want to listen, you don't want to have to listen to the entire 12 minutes of this to identify stations, especially when there's certainly not 12 minutes worth of audio. This is where having a noise track uh, can be very useful. So what I've got here when I extracted the um, audio, um, I also extracted at frequency 87.9. And uh, although there are exceptions, there are um, especially some Latin American countries where you might pick up a signal on 87.9, then you may have to use a different frequency. But where I am in the Western US, virtually all the time, this is going to be a very, very clean uh, signal. Now, there may be a few slight bumps here, um, but some of that also um, is that there may be some general noise in the system. But what I want to do, I want to zoom in here. And if we zoom in and slide over here, so this is about the first minute. And basically, this is white noise. And the way we can determine that is let's select say the first 20 seconds or so of this file. You go into the Analyze menu and choose Plot Spectrum. And what you're seeing, uh, the window is labeled Frequency Analysis, and that's exactly what this is. This is a plot um, of basically the amount of signal that you're getting as a function of frequency. And this is uh, uh, what you call a, a Fourier transform, where you take the data in, as a normal time series and you do a mathematical procedure on it to convert it into um, the, uh, a signal versus frequency as opposed to a signal versus time. Now, this very low frequency stuff over here is not really very important because there's, there's no, uh, there's no uh, audible signal in that area. But otherwise, you see that this uh, frequency versus uh, sorry, um, signal versus frequency plot is pretty much a straight line uh, with a little bit of noise around that. And perfect white noise is um, uh, an equal blend of all frequencies. 
So this is a fairly close approximation to actual white noise. This is what you would hear as static. Now this is on a logarithmic x-axis, so it stretches out the frequencies, so, so the low frequencies you can see a lot of detail and then not as much detail in the high frequencies. If I go to a linear scale, well then it's even more dramatically visible that we have white noise here because it's very flat, very slight, um, only very slight uh, jiggles in the uh, data. And then you can see the roll off starting at about 6,500 or so and it starts to accelerate around 7,000 and then fades out to 7,800. And again, that's the, uh, that's the frequency cutoff in extracting the audio file because that very high frequency stuff um, doesn't really carry much information. Okay, so um, if we have true static, we have white noise. So what's, what's the big deal? I've got this 20 seconds here of white noise. I'm under effect. I'm going to select noise reduction. And as it says here, select a few seconds of just noise so Audacity knows what to filter out, then click get noise profile. Now, I'm throwing in 20 seconds, it could be a few seconds. Uh, in principle, a larger uh, sample could work better, um, but internally, Audacity smooths that somewhat, somewhat. So, get noise profile, fine, doesn't really do anything there. But now let's go to our real signal. So this is the um, uh, frequency where there are stations, and under effect, Let's go back to noise reduction. And now we'll do the step two. So we, we got the white noise from uh, a static filled frequency. And now uh, we want to do a noise reduction on the uh, audio that we actually want to analyze. And so there are three, well actually there are four settings here. Noise reduction in decibels. The higher the amount of noise reduction, um, obviously the, 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 the stronger the subtraction of that noise profile. Sensitivity, um, this one, um, it, it kind of has to do with, with how much of the, uh, uh, it, it's another way of kind of figuring, of, of specifying how much of the uh, signal that it's going to try to, um, try to subtract out. Um, for the purpose of maintaining decent audio quality, usually you want this to be a high number. So I, ha I, always, I always have this set on 20. Frequency smoothing, um, if you have um, a, a white noise profile that, that isn't very clean, you might jump that up to one, um, but it already does some smoothing. So if you've got good white noise, don't even mess with that. And then reduce versus residue, uh, what you can actually do is if you're not sure about your noise reduction process, you can click on residue and it'll give you, instead of um, what's left after the subtraction, it'll actually give you what you've subtracted. And so if you choose residue and you hear some real signals, like real audio in there, that means that your, your subtraction isn't working right. The residue um, um, uh, should be the noise and the reduce should be the good audio signals that you want. And five decibels is a pretty good starting place. Um, at five decibels, you do start, sometimes um, the audio can be slightly distorted, so that, that can be a factor, but uh, five is a, is a pretty good number. And watch what happens. So let's compare the noise reduced audio to the raw audio. So I will do a, a command Z here to undo that. And we'll do this again and what I'm going to do is I'll make note here with my fingers of where the the re peak real audio is compared to where the peak of the noise is. So let me redo this and notice that the noise was reduced a lot more than the signal. Now um, of course the, the signal there's there's some uh, still some power, a, a broadband power across all the frequencies, but most of that is, is um, at specific frequencies because of voice or music or whatever, as opposed to being white noise. And so now it becomes a little bit easier to see this audio. It can also be a little bit easier 
to hear the audio. Now I'm going to um, go to a higher value. Let's go to a really, really high value here. Go to 15 on noise reduction. Now here, it's very, very obvious where the audio is. The problem, though, is that there will be a lot of distortion in the audio. And so let me uh, play an example of that. And you, you can hear a lot of audio artifacts there. There were two different stations there coming in. Uh, one was a, a French-speaking station, presumably out of Canada, and then there was another station playing music. Now, if we completely undo that and play the similar area uh, without that... And you can hear that the audio sounds more normal. Now, at five decibels, um, that's kind of a middle ground. You may notice a very slight, um, maybe a slight reduction in audio quality, but not really much. Uh, but yet, uh, you can still more easily see where the... Uh, uh, where the actual audio signal is. Now, the other thing you want to do is go ahead and amplify this. Uh, you may or may not have to do this. Um, uh, if you're listening off of, directly off of, uh, say, a, a laptop speakers, um, this amplification can be uh, very beneficial. Uh, otherwise, if you're listening with headphones, it may not matter very much. Uh, but it also kind of stretches out the uh, waveform and makes it a little easier to see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the beginning. And the plus sign and magnifies, it zooms in. I'm going to stop that. Now, there's not much going on here. This is still pretty much noise. You can use the right arrow key to kind of skip through the file. So in that segment, uh, sounds like we have uh, at least uh, one, maybe two religious stations, and maybe another station in there with the music, but, but certainly, uh, most likely, two stations in there. And so that's the part that we needed to listen to. Now, there was nothing to identify that. So we can, and, and we have this area beyond, uh, uh, after that, where there's nothing going on there. We don't need to listen to this, okay? Uh, uh, even after um, uh, reducing... Uh, some of the white noise, it's still a mess. It's still just, in fact, we can verify that. So you can hear that that sounds noisy. And let's take a segment of it. Let's analyze it again with the plot spectrum command. And it's still basically white noise. So there's no need to mess with that. So we keep going. Now we see maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of something here. It's kind of faint. It's probably that one of those religious stations. Now you can go ahead and just amplify sections of it because if you do the overall amplify, it'll limit it to the uh, maximum signal that you have. So here, where the signal is very weak, we can amplify that individually. <laughs> Certainly, nothing for identifications there. Okay, so what I want to go to now is um, when I listened to this, uh, I was actually able to identify a station, and that'll be, that's right in here. From atmosphere to zoo animal, it's Minnesota Music on KVSP. 
So that was uh, it's Minnesota Music on KVSC. Now that was kind of fading out a little bit. Uh, another thing you can do, uh, especially for these short sections, is instead of just doing an amplify, do, do a compressor. Now you can vary the settings on the compressor. Um, make up gain for zero dB after compressing, that's usually good, that maximizes the signal. And compress based on peaks, and what that does is that will stretch everything out and, and basically make everything loud. And that's, that's uh, uh, taking it kind of extreme, but that's what you want to do here. From atmosphere to zoo animal, it's Minnesota Music on KVSC. So in principle, that can make things a little more audible. Um, we could also try to apply a little more noise reduction. Maybe not another 5 dB, but maybe another 3. See what happens with that. So it reduces that down a little bit. From atmosphere to zoo animal, it's Minnesota Music on KVSC. Hard to say whether that really uh, made the signal easier to find, um, but that's something you can experiment with. You can... Um, uh, see if different amounts of uh, noise reduction makes it easier or harder to hear the signal. Now another important effect that you can uh, try to apply, which may help in some cases, is equalization. And let me go to uh, one of the built-in ones. This is called 100 Hertz Rumble. And basically this is a high-pass filter that cuts out uh, bass. And that can be useful because um, our, our hearing tends to be um, best kind of in the more middle frequencies rather than very low frequencies. And the very low frequencies can make uh, 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 things sound muddy. Now if we apply this, uh, what I want to do here, let's, let's look at the first, let's look at the spectrum for that part of audio. Now you see it's definitely not white noise. We have these peaks and especially the peak here around 100 to 200 and about uh, 300 out here to uh, several hundred. And that's where most of the power is coming from for the voice, which is what we're trying to pick out there. So if we subtract, um, if we, well not subtract, but if we uh, remove these uh, low frequencies with the 100 hertz rumble, Overall, it doesn't go down a whole lot because most of the power is not at that frequency. But now you plot the spectrum, and you can see that it rolls off these low frequencies, and so there's very little power below about 50 or 60 hertz. Now let's listen to that again. From atmosphere to zoo animal, it's Minnesota Music on KBS. Now that may or may not have sounded uh, clearer. Um, and you kind of experiment with that. Uh, not everybody's hearing is identical. We all have slightly different frequency responses. It can depend on whether you're listening with headphones or listening through a speaker. And so that's something you can play with. And there are a variety of, of equalizations uh, that, are, that are in here um, that cut out high frequencies or low frequencies or uh, things like that. And you kind of want to play with those. Now you can also make your own. You can take one of these, uh, one of these frequency uh, responses here. Say that's um, uh, 100 hertz rumble. Let's say uh, you don't want it to be quite uh, take out quite so many frequencies. You click on the line. You actually click on one of the, these dots. Now you may not be able to see these on the on the picture, but they're 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 there. And you can drag those those dots up to zero. And those are the little points that identify the, uh, or that, that are, are used to generate this profile. And now, instead of, uh, now we're preserving everything down to about 75 hertz and then cutting it off. And you can, you can play around with these. You can also use these to cut out a particular frequency. I'm going to make a dot, make one right, uh, do this right here. And then make another one, click on that again. And... You can play with this a little bit. And so now I would be uh, uh, cutting out frequencies. Uh, this would be around 230 hertz. So maybe 200 to, to 200 to 270 hertz. I'm, I'm diminishing those by as much as 15 dB. Length of filter. 
Um, the only reason why you don't want to use, the main reason why you wouldn't want to use, uh, put this all the way up to maximum is if you have a really, really slow CPU. Um, what this does, if I go, if I go to a smaller filter, notice that the green line doesn't match the, um, the blue or, or, or purplish line. And that's because uh, it's basically not as precise a filter. It's either easier mathematically to do, um, but it's not going to be quite as precise. And so the higher you go, the more closely you can match uh, the real curve uh, to uh, the real curve to what you want it to be. And notice that if I go really, you can go really sharp here and cut out a very narrow range of frequencies. But if you make the filter shorter, that very quickly blows up. And uh, if you're on a short filter, you might not get much um, uh, reduction at that particular frequency. Now, there are a variety of other effects in here, but honestly, most of those um, aren't particularly useful. Um, one more that you, that, that you might uh, want to do is to change tempo. Now, change pitch will literally change the pitch of the sound. That probably isn't going to be very useful. Changing the speed, that, that uh, changes the speed overall. So, so if, you play it, if you play something faster, it's also going to uh, uh, sound higher pitched. What you'll probably find most useful is change tempo. And what the change tempo will do, it changes tempo without changing pitch. That stretches out the timing or compresses the timing of the audio um, while at the same time preserving the pitch of the sound. So let's hear that previous thing, and I'm going to slow it down by 20%. So notice that it stretches out because it's literally expanding the time, and let's listen to that. From atmosphere to zoo animal, it's Minnesota music on KVSC. And so it sounds a little slower than it did before. Um, that can be useful, especially if um, the announcer is speaking very, very rapidly and you're trying to, trying to catch um, a, a word or two in there, especially if it's a very noisy um, audio signal. Um, but if you, if you um, uh, stretch that out too much, then you start getting so much distortion that it really doesn't help a whole lot. Just like with the noise reduction. Uh, a little bit can be a good thing, but too much will be, uh, uh, make things harder to actually understand.